In Space Watch, almost seven months and nearly 300 million miles later, the time has finally come today. NASA's rover, Perseverance, will hopefully be landing on the Red Planet. But the spacecraft must first survive what is referred to as, quote, seven minutes of terror. CBS News' Carter Evans is outside Mission Control in Pasadena, California, with the latest. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, seven minutes of terror. We'll explain why that is on a second. First, I want to introduce you to Perseverance, a replica of Perseverance, or Percy as they call it here at JPL. This is one of the most complex and largest rovers they've ever built. It's about the size of a small car, and scientists have huge plans for it once it's on Mars. But first, it has to complete one of the most dangerous landings ever. And there is a reason why they call it the seven minutes of terror and lift off. It turns out launching Perseverance to Mars last summer was the easy part. 293 million miles later, the success of this $2.4 billion mission now rides on nailing the landing. So many little pieces have to go exactly right in order to get the whole thing to work. Engineer Swati Mohan will be doing play-by-play -play in mission control during the descent. This is all autonomous, right? They, like once this process starts, there's nothing you can do. We call it the seven minutes of terror because it takes seven minutes to get from the top of the atmosphere down to the ground safely. The clock starts ticking when Perseverance plunges into the planet's thin atmosphere at 12,000 miles per hour. Its heat shield must survive scorching temperatures hotter than lava. Then its parachute has to fully deploy to slow it down. Even if all that works, Perseverance still needs to find a safe landing spot at a place considered far too dangerous for previous missions, Jezero Crater. It's filled with these rocks and cliffs and sandy areas, but the exact reasons that scientists love it so much is why we engineers get very nervous trying to fly to Jezero Crater. Landing here now is only possible because of new navigation technology Mohan helped design. Perseverance will scan the terrain below and change course to avoid obstacles. Then the rover will be lowered the last 65 feet on cables, suspended by a rocket-propelled sky crane. After the rover Curiosity landed on Mars eight years ago, it confirmed the red planet once could have supported life. Perseverance will try to find definitive proof. If life existed on another planet like Mars, that would be such an amazing result. NASA's Thomas Serbukin told us when Mars was covered with water three and a half billion years ago, Jezero Crater was a lake. A river came in and it deposited sediments. So if there's ancient life, we think that's the highest likelihood of finding it. Using its robotic arm, the rover will drill for sediment samples that could contain evidence of past microbial life. But today, the only proof of life that matters will be a photo from Perseverance after a safe touchdown. What's that site going to be like for you? To be able to see that the wheels are on the ground safely in one piece, that'll be a tremendous moment. So adding to the difficulty today, because of the time it takes for a signal to travel from Mars to Earth, it's about 11 minutes. That's at the speed of light, by the way. So there is a huge delay. And that means by the time we start seeing data from those seven minutes of terror, well, on Mars, whatever happened will already be over. Emery. Oh my God. You know, Carter, watching sort of the play by play in your story of how they're going to get the rover down to the surface of the planet, I was having heart palpitations. And then I thought, after I they get the samples, how, how on earth do they get the samples back to Earth? Like, what's the process for that? So this is just the first in a couple of missions, and, and this is gonna blow your mind. So in the next mission, they're planning on bringing another rover back and a rocket. They're gonna put that on the surface of Mars, go collect that cache of samples, put it on the rocket, blast it into Mars's orbit. Then a European spacecraft is gonna catch that rocket, grab those samples and bring them all the way back to Earth for study. Oh, that is um, one nerve-wracking process. Um, okay, so I was thinking relay race. That's what I was trying to remember. That is a nerve-wracking relay race. Um, NASA's previous Mars rover, the Curiosity, landed on the Red Planet eight years ago. 
How's that going? What's happening with that? How is Perseverance and its mission going to be different than Curiosity's? Well, you know, Curiosity is still out there. Uh, first of all, Curiosity landed in a different area. Scientists have always wanted to land in this Jezero crater, but they couldn't because it was just too dangerous because essentially the landing of Curiosity and previous ro rovers has been blind. So they had to aim for a very large, smooth area. Well, now they have this new guidance technology, so they really think they can put this rover exactly where they wanted inside Jezero crater. Um, so here's the thing, Mars is really popular lately. I feel like I've done like a few stories on Mars. The, uh, um, we've got China, I think that's orbiting Mars right now. The UAE orbiting Mars right now. There's a little bit of a traffic jam going on over there. What, what is the appeal of Mars at this moment? Mars is a popular place right now, and, that, and China, they're going to actually try to land a rover on Mars in May, so that's significant. You know, Mars is the next frontier right now. Once they get these rover things set up, and once they determine that they can actually make some oxygen on Mars, well, then it'll be time to send humans there. So there is a race to get to Mars. But, you know, when I spoke to scientists here, uh, they say they're all learning from each other. It doesn't matter at this point, at least, uh, which other country is heading for Mars because each time, each time is an experience, a learning experience where they can learn some lessons for future missions. I'm so glad you said that um, because, yeah, the technology is really cool and watching sort of the, the graphic reenactment is, is fascinating. But this is one thing that, you know, space exploration always reminds us that there are more things that bind us together than separate us. We have to work together to accomplish something like this across country lines, uh, ideological lines. It just, it just reminds us that humanness is what kind of keeps us together, right? And our human curiosity. Um, Carter Evans, thank you so much. That's great. Sure thing.